And then I can see. tell the more. D, so they do delivery of yes. some things, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello, hello. Yeah. Or oh, maybe I wanted to see with the center. Maybe here. The bio. Mm -hmm. Hello. All right. From France, I take it? Uh, yeah, I am. From, yeah. Uh, I'm from Germany. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm from Italy. Yeah. Where? Italy. Italy. Oh, that's a good mixture here, people. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you're from Bologna. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. Great. Where are you from? Uh, Dijon. Mm -hmm. How about you? Uh, right. Hmm? What are you from in Germany? Oh, uh, near Bremen. Yes. Yeah. So it's not uh, northwest Germany. Yeah. So yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Great. I love the idea of Sentinel, though. <laughs> yes, yes, it's kind of what we work on. So uh -huh. I'd be happy to maybe share in like yeah. 30 seconds. <laughs> I don't need to go. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Uh, yeah, I think that would be great because then that will help us a little bit how one right. can implement some of these things potentially, right? Because and we have been trying, <laughs> we're thinking about how to apply this oh. to aging. That's oh. what we're working on, except that we know very, I know very little about aging. We really just started. And so we're probably using the wrong genes, the wrong microRNAs, the wrong cells. The wrong... <laughs> we just have the tools, but I'm not sure we're using the right system. Oh, okay. We could wait until yeah. Joshua's back and they sit down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. Maybe if they have coffee, I'll just get a quick coffee. Yeah. I guess they would have all right so you're gonna you're gonna be the note taker that was me. That was me. <laughs> it sounded like uh, uh, volunteering domination. All right. I can't really handwrite anymore. I feel like I remember better if I write it. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm so slow. Oh, yeah. Like, I like handwriting, but I, I'm yeah, really yeah. slow. Oh, yeah. And yeah. And it does have a little mint thing on it, but I'm wondering if that part of it just fell off. <sighs> How are you? Good. And you? Good. It's a late night last night. All right. Okay. Yeah. So this is good. Um, yeah. Maybe do we want to wait for George or Josh or? Uh, yeah. 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 We can wait a moment. Okay. We can just. There's a couple people. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Because I mean, one thing I would love to go home with is an, also an idea of what could be next steps or something, right? Yeah. Or if one wanted to propose something, um, what is actually an actionable item to propose, right? Okay. Versus coming from the idea to uh, what could one actually do, right? Like that's, yeah, that's, uh, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Um, because if, for example, one wanted to write something at some point as a proposal, right, it would be nice to have some uh, kind of starting points of some kind, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Maybe we should start. Um, you know, sure. So maybe you could tell us a little bit how you think about Sentinel and yeah. what your thoughts are, and then we could discuss it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I don't want to go into a super detailed presentation about my work or so, but I can add as many details as you want. But in kind of in summary, we think about sentinel cells in terms of engineering cells that can monitor 
um, that can give a diagnostic readout, whether that's a GFP or whatever you want it to be, um, in response to changes in gene expression. Mm -hmm. And so that means um, transcriptional signatures, so changes in mRNA. We've also started collaborating with someone that develops RNA sensors, and we are transporting them in mammalian cells. And so we can look at all kinds of RNAs, meaning uh, mRNA, but also no coding RNA, which I think, from my understanding, is they can be relevant in aging and oncogenesis because you have specific microRNA signature of different temporal stages of aging. I don't know if we have that level of, I mean, I don't know if that's true. So uh, for transcriptional signature, what we essentially do is um, sort of the idea that I introduced at the beginning of the workshop. We wanted to kind of bypass the cell sensors that look at a cell membrane receptor and go directly at the mm. chromosomal level. Mm -hmm. So say you have your kind of gene of interest or whatever that gene might be. Mm -hmm. So we can kind of uh, do this for virtually any gene in your chromosome. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. We can link that to, uh, say, a GFP signal, right? Mm -hmm. And we okay. can do that by inserting the GFP gene in the chromosome linked to either an IRES or other ways that, like, where we have a constant ratio of expression of your gene and your GFP. Mm -hmm. But then what we've really kind of specialized in, in doing in terms of the synthetic biology aspect is um, rather than just putting GFP, can we build a circuit that mm -hmm. allows us to have amplification, because sometimes the changes in gene expression can be very small, right? Like a twofold change in, you know, mm -hmm. qPCR is a hard to monitor, but actually very relevant. Mm -hmm. And then also, so amplified, but also get a nice dynamic resolution so that you don't mm -hmm. have to wait for a long time for the GFP signal to decay, but you have that very good kind of resolution of the change in terms mm -hmm. of dynamics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so these, we've done it and we've published it um, and we've adapted it uh, to a number of different genes. At the time we were working on, or we are still working on the unfolded protein response, UPR, we made it for some autophagy genes, mm. but we could kind of apply it to, you know, adapt it to any gene essentially. Mm -hmm. And then for the non-coding RNA, we use different type of RNA sensors. Mm -hmm. And again, we can do it where it's directly linked to a, you know, fluorescent reporter, or we can link it to our gene circuits and we can amplify and get a better kind of dynamic resolution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of, that could be quite powerful. And so, so, so just to conclude the things that we were thinking um, are, uh, can we look at different so markers of aging of course mm -hmm. right and i use them either as build either reporters or way to try to slow down or reverse aging and so the first thing we look at is of course overexpression of telomerase which has been shown like people are trying to do it through rna delivery even um and so looking at markers of aging as i was saying we were looking at microRNAs that seem to be expressed at different levels depending on the age of the cell. So whether it's still kind of early. And so the question we wanted to answer is, is still like a early stage where we can slow down, potentially even reverse aging, because there is evidence that you can reverse aging. Or is there a threshold, like Patrick was saying, where, you know, after you're like a certain age or age of the cell, where there's no going back and the cell is just committed mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the essence, mm -hmm. whatever she be in a sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. I mean, my lab, we are more focusing on the protein level. Mm -hmm. However, we are collecting and have a lot of data on transcript changes. And that's part of also the SEM network where we're looking at transcript changes in human tissues with aging, right? Like, so we're, the hope is to build really a library of genes that change, even though I'm more on the protein level. Um, but I mean, for example, Marlene Hansen in, in the, the back, she's very focused on autophagy, right? Mm -hmm. So there could be what specific proteins or genes have you looked at there in the autophagy pathway? Um, I would have to look at the oh, list, sure. like, but mm -hmm. the right, kind of right. use are like backlink sure. and the mm -hmm. type of reporters right. that people normally look at. Mm -hmm. I see. Like the APGA3 and 
Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Okay. So can I ask you, yeah. you said that you're building this library. Is this a publicly available library? Well, not quite yet, okay. you know, but we, as part of the SEMNet, we have like all these young human tissues and old human tissues, and we have that for ovary, breast, mm -hmm. and muscle, right? And so, yeah, all of these, we'll do uh, spatial transcriptomics on those, okay. and then also um, 10, 10x uh, single nuclei or sequen cell sequencing. So we will have all these transcript signatures in the end that are really human derived from human aging, not a model, right? So sure. those those could all develop into cool targets, right? Yeah, this is sort of what I was wondering because right. I, I feel like we, in designing a lot of these circuits and sensors, right. we sort of have to have an idea of like what protein you're getting after. Right, right, right. You know, is it a true. connection? Is it soluble? Is it, you know, right. Like, right. all of those things. Right, right. But it's interesting if one goes after the, after a protein marker, on the transcript level, then probably one should develop the marker also on the transcript level, right? Because there's a, always a bit of disconnect between what gets, say, secreted and mm -hmm. what changes on the expression mm -hmm. level, on the transcript level. But um, I mean, the problem is, though, that every tissue has a little bit slightly different markers there, but that's maybe fine also. Um, right. Oh, I mean, we well, use... help to target that, too, right. so that actually might be a strength. I would think. If oh we, yeah, we use yeah. It to target. Then it's very specific, right? Well, yeah, because yeah. then, and so if 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 they're, if if we could build a cell that could say, I want to go to the muscle and not the kidney mm. and not the liver. Mm -hmm. You know, there needs to be something specific, right, to target so that it doesn't right. get lost on the way. That's also way. true. Yeah, and true. So um, so, so so the. The fact that you just said that they're all a little bit different. Right, that's I think it actually yeah. might be a strength. Yeah, I the agree. Tool building. Right, design. that's true. Oh, so you mean now also for delivery potentially? Yeah, yeah, and even just going mm -hmm. after, even if it was an encoding RNA or if it was whether we're sensing, whether we're right. you know, pushing it down some sort of degradation pathway, whatever it is, right. you know, we end up doing. Um, yes. That, that um, the ability to identify what it is we're going to target in the sense of whether it's a sensor or whether it's some we're going to do something to the cell once we get there. Um, that's it, it's it's these it's these biomarkers you right. know, that we were true. talking about. And true. So, true. And so that's, that's what I was thinking. I agree. We think of it in terms of like that was sort of our ultimate goal would be to build some kind of cell classifiers mm -hmm. that would allow you to not only see different cell types, but also say the same cell types uh, are they where they are in their senescence process, right? Are they still kind of reversible senescence? And then we um, we kind of rescue them versus they're senescent and they're resistant to apoptosis and we just want to kill them. Mm -hmm. So. I took this as a curiosity question. When you look at a tissue mm -hmm. and you're looking for your senescent cells, mm -hmm. do you mostly see them? Is there like a, a spot in the tissue that you mostly see them? Are they like on the periphery or are they in the oh, middle? Yeah. It's very or interesting. They yeah, often they have like little hot spots. Okay. And the reason for that is because senescent cells, when they form, um, they also secrete the secretome yeah. and they make something called bystander senescence. Uh -huh. So uh, cells around, they also become senescent. So then often you have like little hot spots of yeah. areas and then there's an, a lot of nothing and then there's another hot spot or something, right? So so that is actually kind of cool to see. Yeah. Um, when we... Mm -hmm. So that is aging just like this long... Well, I mean, it's it's here. Oh, no, no. <laughs> well, it is interesting that when uh, we call them the primary senescent cells, what they secrete, and then they make other cells also senescent, mm -hmm. but what the secondary bystander senescent cells secrete is slightly different. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you have one senescent cell and your whole body becomes sure. senescent. It's that boundary that's really interesting. Right, right, right. right. Everywhere. Yes. It's like, how did you know to stop and leave right. me alone? Right. But you're senescent. Right, right. Like, what right. is that? It's sort of that, that, that I think is a really interesting spot. Absolutely. Yeah. Abso oh, yeah, absolutely. And um, I mean, we have looked um, at our first, uh, first spatial transcriptomics for the ovaries where we had really yeah, we had these hot spots, but then I mean, even in the ovary tissue, you have the cortex and the medulla, mm -hmm. and on the transcript level, it looked like there was a lot more senescence in the cortex of the ovary, and less in the medulla. 
However, when we looked at SARS, we saw more in medulla on the protein level, right? So it's, but we will get these signatures both on transcript and protein level, which is also powerful, I think, as you say. But um, I mean, yeah, they are a little bit interspersed throughout this uh, the tissue, you know, and um, but yeah, I mean, maybe that is true as we get these signatures and we're just kind of starting now where we have all, we have all these tissues in place. And I really think that that's a huge resource, right? That's very valuable because it's not just looking at a cell, like an induced um, tissue cell system, but this is actually the real old humans yes. that we think have higher senescence burden or or even if they have signatures that are not senescent, they're still aging signatures potentially, right? So um so yeah, those could all be funneled into say your pipeline or mm -hmm. or like a pipeline that makes like for a delivery, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Can bystanders senescence be induced in a contact? Is it is it ever contact dependent? I think contact independence when you say sacrotome. Yeah, um, I mean, we think um, it can be also just done by exosomes. I think it could be contact independent um, because in the soluble loam, I mean, the soluble, they travel and the EVs, they, mm -hmm. they can even travel further, right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking about mm -hmm. it because it could be like concentration field, but otherwise it's kind of surprising that it stays localized mm -hmm. if it's mediated by a secreted right. vacuum. Right. Pretty good interstitial right. transport of right. Right. things, right? right. So, well, I mean, we do also think that some of these EVs get into the circulation and then can yeah. travel really far, right? But um, that's harder to analyze yeah. in a way, right? But um, yeah. So the, the secret term of senescent cell is relatively well characterized. Yeah, of course, some, uh, but I mean, not for all cell types, right? Um, but we're getting more and more cell types characterized. But yeah, the, we have huge data on that, yes. So would, mm -hmm. would that be a way, would that be an input that one could use? So if you could make sentient cells that... Right. If we identify some secreted molecules uh, mm -hmm. that maybe have uh, some sort of function as input for the sentinel cells. Right. Uh, uh, right. In this some yeah. transcriptional signature or mm -hmm. some other things. Yeah. Well, I mean, actually, so one protein that uh, is interesting, periostin, the protein that's also in the extracellular matrix. We saw that, uh, actually, we saw it with Francesca Duncan in ovary aging of mice, young and old mice. Okay. We see it also if we take human ovaries and induce senescence. That's what uh, you did. Mm -hmm. um, so we basically see, see this in different uh, experimental modules that all are linked to aging, either real organismal aging or uh, induced senescence aging we we kind of like that protein that's so yeah i'm sure that we could out of all the data sets we have come up with some that really um and then did Faye see periostin also go up on the protein on the transcript level Do you remember? i'm not sure we can check yeah. right so because we also have rna single cell sequencing of ovaries now so i mean maybe you know yeah maybe one could actually see a few target transcripts um, that are maybe changing both on the SASP as well as on the transcript level, right? So are you basically open for ideas of yeah. yes, targets? I mean, uh, mm -hmm. Something I'm not sure I understood well is like each sentinel cell like recognize one marker at the time or can it like recognize a, a panel of markers? So one for sure, I think we can think of, uh, we have some split reporter, split transcription factor that we could make uh, where we could do some either or, or analogic behavior. Um, yeah, my question come like, for instance, to the fact that periostin we see like in different tissues. So this would be maybe like more like an organism general, more general mm -hmm. one. But if we want to be more specific, we can then add some really tissue specific mm -hmm. markers and have like this uh, com combination or combinatory mm -hmm. signature to be sure that uh, yes. this is like a uh, bad senescent cells mm -hmm. or like uh, detrimental phenotypes. And this is like a real right. target right. we want to. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I don't think, I mean, I don't think you can do like an infinite number, yeah. <laughs> but that's sort of what I think synthetic biologists like to think about, like mm -hmm. if you can integrate different mm -hmm. signals. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you could have parallel ones, right? One yes. sentinel for this, one oh, sentinel yeah. for yeah, that, absolutely. and when they co-localize, then that's a good sign or something, right? Oh, that, mm -hmm. yes. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. And then would you, can I ask these, would you, those you would put into cell lines or tissues or what? Uh... So we work with cell lines. Cell lines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what are those? Uh... Um, so we've done it with HAC-293 yeah. mm -hmm. uh, for mm -hmm. the um, um, adherent and in suspension. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That's mostly. And then mm -hmm. some RPE cells that we use for cell therapy. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the only reason why we wanted to do it. Yeah, because yeah. they're more, mm -hmm. uh -huh. they're more like safety. Oh. Like they are FDA approved. And so then we can kind of, our collaborator takes them. Mm. And well, that's interesting. The IA has, of course, problems with uh, senescence and aging, right? Like macular degeneration, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, the IA is actually a good model um, in a way because you could potentially target. Uh, very localized, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can inject or uh, eye drops, eye drops even, yeah. right? Yeah. And then, I mean, you could look, I mean, eventually we would like to look for markers in tears also, mm -hmm. right? Like, I mean, for biomarker readout, bio, biofluid, right? We had, we have some project, what did we do with the dry eye? Right? Yes. Like dry eye, linking that to senescence. Uh, well, apparently, um, well, so many people suffer from that. Uh, however, it's not considered a real detrimental disease. However, it does uh, impact climate too. Right, quality of life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the eye is interesting potentially also. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Dry. I just am thinking dry eye seems like a hard um, scenario to collect tears. <laughs> I love this Make movie. them cry. Yeah. Make them cry. You show them a bad movie, a sad movie. <laughs> That's true. That's circular. <laughs> I was interested in what you were talking about with the secretome. I wonder if there's inter I'll just pitch an idea that could be related oh. to sentinel cells. Oh, yeah. We could we could link it to kind of uh, probes for the kind of like sender receiver behavior that seems to be involved in these. And I'll put it in exosomes, for example. Oh, yes. One thing we could imagine doing is engineering. Uh, cells so that they are secreting certain things on the surface of the exosomes. So just like it could be an engineered protein, right? Yeah. You could engineer a, uh, I guess the whole organism to then have, and maybe they do this in a way that's specifically triggered in senescence. Mm -hmm. You could engineer the rest of the cells in the organism mm. to then respond to that mm. surface feature mm. using this kind of sentinel right. approach. Mm. It could be a sentinel cell or it could uh -huh. be like, similar concept where you're looking at just like when a cell becomes senescent, how far does this reach, mm. right? Oh, I mean, that sounds really interesting because we talked yesterday a bit about organ-organ communication, right? And I mentioned maybe we're looking, we're really interested in the uh, communication between musculoskeletal, um, you know, system and the brain and vice versa. So I mean, do you mean then you could design like a, uh, exosome or extracellular vesicles so that it, then you could see if it reaches the brain or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Because they're usually right. so small and imaging is terrible. And right. One who tries right. to image them doesn't right. really work. Well, but you can look at a cell, like right. a cell that turns on mm. when it received a specific, and I'm saying surface the exosome because that simplifies a ton oh. of the like sensitivity issues. Mm. Most exosomes just get degraded sure. when they go to a recipient cell. Right. It oh, still yeah. triggers right. stuff on the way in. So right. Like a, right. Similar to a cytokine or something like that. Right. You engineer the sender right. receiver behavior. Mm. I like that. I mean, because just showing that you can get something transported from an aging site in one organ to right. some other organ and that's made, already huge i feel right and if you made it dynamic you mm -hmm. could see how that changes over time like if you want to know how the kidney ages you could see where are its evs going over the right. course of the aging right and it would just light up differently over time yeah and if they're like also like preferential niche i don't know like cancer with metastasis or right. something oh, yeah. like breast cancer that would preferentially in metastasis to bone uh, mm -hmm. tissues, like right. if they're like, like similar yeah. mechanism mm -hmm. with senescence oh, yeah. and aging. Yeah. yeah. 
And the EVs, the reason I'm saying that is because unlike a secretive protein, you don't have to trigger right. EV formation. And you may want to study how the different features on the EVs change over time because it gets secreted. Right. right? I assume we have the same motion. It was like, okay, what's well, out? Is it, is it getting in? <laughs> Doing anything to the other cells? Well, we, we probe that. Right. For us, we have done a lot of work on exosomes or EVs, but we're really looking at what goes out. We don't know where they go, right? I mean, that's a really interesting and probably more important question even, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, I think... Um, and then you would do that in the mouse organism or? I don't know. I was just throwing it out there as a thing right. that kind of is a very similar idea to right. what we talked about with right. the other. Oh, no, I think. Yeah. And responding. It would have the same challenges in that it's going to be a low amount of stuff, especially if you look at an organism level. Right. You're going to need to do some like signal discrimination, amplification, right. background right. subtraction. Right. Things. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, that would be great. Both, both ideas, actually. Um, so, and you can, would you, um, is it important what you put on the surface or? or? Probably. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. How would you design that or? I don't know. I mean, I have an idea. Right. I think mm -hmm. that the way I'm thinking of it is it would be something that is not present mm. in the normal mouse right. if we're doing right. a mouse sure. because right. you want to be able to have it only turn on when you get that contact, right? Mm -hmm. And there are definitely a number of like example systems where you can make uh, like GFP responsive receptors, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So you could use anything really that's a suitable mm -hmm. receptor like mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, interaction, yeah. depending on which what you're trying to send. Right. So, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's an interesting thought. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking the like the notch is a tension dependent, contact mm -hmm. dependent sensor. I don't know if the contact between an EV and a cell would be enough to trigger mechanotransduction. I guess this. I don't know. That would be really easy to test. Yeah. I feel like we could do that in my lab if we right. needed to test oh, yeah. that. Yeah. But yeah. if it didn't, then you could just move more like a, you know. Um, I guess it's yes. But I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say because even they're a lot smaller than another cell. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a good experiment. It is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's true. I'm yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, right. that would so be super relevant. It work either way, I suppose. Right. And yeah, right. I think there's plenty of like prior knowledge to suggest that it's possible, even if mm -hmm. we don't currently know exactly how to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so the, right. So what you would design is the original tissue? Well, I'm just thinking eventually, Right. I think this is like a set of things. Right. right? that we could not have to do to kind of like the same thing you did with this, like different sentinels for different right. cues. Eventually right. we have this panel of things right. to study these phenomena and they're going to have the similar challenges, I think, in terms of like the performance characteristics needed to make the mm -hmm. question answered by mm -hmm. the tool. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So oh, that might be the linkage versus the actual specific molecules or- Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, right, right. But also with your sentinel idea, I think we could, I mean, come up with a list of genes, transcripts, right, that maybe we would find the most interesting out of what we already have, right? And we're, I mean, with, we have like all these samples, we already have quite a lot, but we even have more in the freezers, right, which is actually quite cool. <laughs> and um, as part of the sentinel, Send that we're working with really a lot of different tissues. Our site only has three tissues, but we already work with Pittsburgh together. They have lung tissue, human lung tissue. We actually just finished that experiment, right? Like we had like 20 lung tissues across the ages and found really cool markers there. And that was intracellular, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So so but I mean these are real aging. These this is not a mouse experiment or cell culture. These are like people that have aged, right? So those are maybe the ultimate aging markers in the end. Um, and then we- Are they healthy individuals? Yeah, or are they... those are healthy aged people, healthy right? Age. So we are of course really interested in these, those markers that are senescent. But on the other hand, if it's an aging marker, uh, senescent or not, that, that's always interesting, right? So yeah, I mean, I think that could give us a list of really nice yeah, things to choose from. And, and, um, and then- one question I had, you said for your ovary cells, you make them age. 
right? Uh, yeah, yeah like induced porcinescence. How do you induce them? Uh, they were induced with uh, doxorubicin. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is also a cancer treatment yeah, right. uh, thing. Yeah. So in the end, that's also interesting in general for the human body, yeah, right? Exactly. Like what happens? So is that a some... pretty well accepted model? Yeah, very, or... very. Yes. Yeah. And actually, um, so it's an explant model. So that's actually, it's very difficult to do. Mm -hmm. um, but Francesca Duncan made it work. In, and the only reason why you can ever do it is that you get the tissue fresh from the human and you start culturing it right away. So any biobank tissue wouldn't uh, qualify for that anymore, right? So that's where, where this is special having working with the places directly, right? So, um, but yeah. do, do other DNA damage methods also induce a oh, yeah. similar, or I guess how different is the senescence if you were with the same tissue inducing with doxyrubicin or like radiation? Or, yeah, exactly. Right. Other right. Right. Well, I mean, we have some markers we call the core SUSP that are always there, like GDF15 or like, I mean, even the periostin is always there, yes. right? Like, yeah, we have some core markers and then specific markers. So it's probably like half-half or something, right? So, um, yeah, it's, but some signatures are just always there and they, those could be first sentinels, for example, right? But again, we should look more if those, because we look always at the protein level, if they are also there on the transcript level, so, so they can qualify for. Yeah. Um, but then if we do these sensor things, right, where something gets sensed in the cell, there it could also be a protein then, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe nice to have some that are regulated on both, yes. right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what it's worth, I'm actually guys talked about this, but the intracellular protein sensing is, is definitely also possible, right? right. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's right, that's right, yeah, right, exactly, yeah, yeah, that's cool, yeah, well, mm -hmm. right, yeah, well, that seems more tractable now in my mind, even <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because I think, as you said, it is really maybe finding the right sentinels, right, mm -hmm. and I think then, um, if one shows the proof of concept, then then one could kind of feed this pipeline with everything coming in, right? Like right. different tissue specificity, general markers, and right. build like a whole repertoire of tools potentially, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. So I guess the way I see it is that uh, it could be two different type of sentinel. One is cell that is actually aging. Mm -hmm. And one is a cell that is responsive to some SAS like mm -hmm. markers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. A cell that is perfectly healthy, like a HAC293, that just robust, immortal, but that responds, uh, that is a sentinel of, um, of the secreted molecules, that are, especially oh. because they're localized in tissue. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, yes. Question? Yeah, this is. Uh, can you hear me, all right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good. Thank you. Yeah, you know, bringing up from the the the, uh, the, the cyber world, you know that. <laughs> uh, so I um, I am a program officer in, in HLBI. Uh huh. Um, my portfolio is uh, acute lung injury and repair. Oh. So our you know um, uh, focus is in part on pulmonary fibrosis. Hmm. Uh, and the, uh, so, you know, the, one of the things that, so I, I am also part of the CENNET, you know, uh, oh. as representative from the, the, the land, I mean, from, from the NHLVI. So uh, one of the things that we commonly discuss in the portfolio, you know, is this um, um, sort of efforts such, such as CENNET, such as lung map that we have, you know, here at NHLVI. Right. That that they had brought on one part, you know, the uh, the the phenomenon of uh, cellular senescent uh, cellular or senescent cells, you know, right, to the lifespan and in aging specifically, but also what happens, you know, is that at the earlier stages of development, uh, that mm -hmm. or, or, or even the the, uh, the 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 normal lung, you know, but very early stage ones, you know, on development. 
Uh, and well, when you put that all together on repair you know, and, and regeneration, I think, you know, what we, uh, and it's just to bring up to this discussion, you know, is the, 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 that, that convergence of the resources mm -hmm. have brought up a list of, of potential candidates, genes or proteins, mm -hmm. you know, or pathways that can be amenable uh, for, mm -hmm. for um, I was, you know, just go specifically to the case of sentinels, you know, for this particular mm -hmm. discussion. Uh, since they you know they may be we are inter interested in lung and fibrosis you know but i i was very i had been very excited to see that there may, may be common pathways you know or common common resource or, or the resources that we have may be used to generate to identify those common or uh, um, pathways or the potential candidates to be sentinels i, I would bring them you know in the for the context of function the structure and function uh, elevating different expression. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that, that if you know, uh, if you get what I, what I kind of try to say, you know, is at the end is that we can, we already may have some kind of lists that we have been mm -hmm. generating through the resources, you know, that come from the, from, uh, from aging side, you know, or from lung side, at least from our side, you know, as an example, to get those convergent, you know, potential candidates to move forward the tremendous effort that we have put together. So I would like to kind right. of invite that kind of, you know, way to say that we're, we're, that probably the, the first candidates, you know, we already may have them, you know, on view. Oh, well, yeah, well, that's great. Um, thank you for, for mentioning that. And again, we have done a lot of work already also on lung now together with, uh, so we would love to um, show you our candidate lists about lung that we have developed as part of the aging signatures with your signatures. Um, and then we actually have done a lot of work on lung cancer, where we so far have seen that a lot of the aging markers are early cancer markers. We talked a bit about earlier. So yeah, I think we could actually, yeah, if we uh, could share our we could share our lists with you and maybe if you were able to share your list with ours uh, one thing that we have found is that the lung is actually a really interesting um, tissue to study because it seems so super consistent even through all biological variability of people I mean we have found that both in the aging project as well as in the cancer project where when we have like 10 and 10 groups right old or young or cancer and uh, no cancer where you think oh it's only 10 people but the signatures are so strikingly strong mm. uh, and this is that much stronger conserved in lung versus other tissues we have looked at such as esophagus or um, gastric or uh, other things we have looked at so lung may actually be a really good system thing with the lung that's interesting is that when you have an infection you have a massive reaction right. in the lung right so then if you wanted to then add another layer like once you sort of get that your foundation you could start to study mm. that immune oh um interaction with the aging as right well, because mm. it, you, you know you could induce an you know any right any kind of, like an LPS infection or something right and um and then you could probably also capture some of those sort of self, -self communications right um I imagine you'd have to We'd have to get the aging part down first <laughs> right. before adding immune cells. But but it, but I, I agree, it's a really interesting spot. Yeah, could, yeah. To, to, to finish, you know, a complexity of lung is the high number of cells, you know, types that are right. present. But but we have already generated some of this richness, you know, through the, the amount of data of transcriptomics, special transcriptomics and omics, you know. So it's is there to be integrated. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really nice moment to to do so, I believe, you know. Well, I mean, uh, that's actually great because you have the transcripts, we have the protein level, yes. and then we could actually pick signatures that maybe show up in both or, you know, so that, yeah, we would love oh, to, right? Interesting. Because then we could get transcripts that work for your approach. We could get protein sentinels for our approach and mm -hmm. could synchronize them a little bit. Um, yeah, would it be, could I email you afterwards maybe and we could connect a little bit? Oh, we'll be happy when I just get the email, you know, here. Thank you. Yeah, okay. All right. Excellent. That's wonderful. Great. So how long is this list of uh, proteins? Like how many hundreds yeah. of proteins? I mean, we have, um, we can set different stringencies. How many did you, so you saw quite a few change, right? With 
yes, they were like about roughly 1500. Oh, that, that change, yeah. yeah. So huge numbers. Yes. But we, this is uh, what stringency did you use there? Like a uh, Q005 and uh, uh, for change of 1.5. Yeah, so we have so we like, a, that. yeah, so what we had done in the cancer project before, we would just set the stringency much higher statistically and also requiring a higher full change yes. that can funnel the the list down to the most robust things right and so yeah we can bring it down to like our best 100 or something or even best 50 um because maybe higher full changes that we see may help right with the you know so yes. and then but then the other criteria could also be which ones change both on protein level and transcript level, right? So, yeah. Um, so, right. right. So, we could funnel down the yeah. list quite a bit. Yeah. I mean, we just got that data, it was just like a week ago or something, yeah, two weeks ago. Before. So, yeah, it's yeah. very yeah. new. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes. So, have you done any type of like ontology analysis where you can look at kind of patterns of expression? Or... Um, I did one really quickly for my mm -hmm. slide uh, here. What we saw that there were a lot of uh, inflammation related mm -hmm. pathways that were altered. Mm -hmm. uh, so, protein mm -hmm. interaction, mm -hmm. uh, but mostly like various inflammation, like mm -hmm. acute inflammation, neuropathy related. Right. Response. Right. Uh, yeah. But you know what is also interesting in the lung, because we have done so much work in tissue culture on lung cells, IMR90, we can compare the, I mean, human tissue aging signatures you have from Christian, the yes. transcript uh, signatures they have. We can check with the Pittsburgh team from the TMC what they have. And we have like a huge SAS blast all on lung fibroblasts right so yeah. so then out of all what i love sometimes to do is take different experimental designs and pick things that are showing up in different experimental paradigms right that are basically signatures uh, even if you do your experiment from with a different experimental design right like things that are really robust that is true but for sentinel cells and i might be completely mm -hmm. wrong here i would expect that for example some proteins involved in inflammation, for mm -hmm. example, those are not necessarily specific for aging, right? right. You have a right. cold, you, can, sure. you work out, no. you have right. so you, if you start killing all the cells that right. are inflamed. True. Then... Yeah, well, that's we, we could then just look at the specific protein or transcript lists and then pick some things that are maybe not, yeah, that are more unique to aging. Yeah, I mean, that some, is the tricky yeah. part, right? Because right. aging tissue probably has some inflammation, mm -hmm. right? right? So you'll right. see... Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, it, that's so hard to do. Can you separate the aging from other diseases? I mean, in the tissues we had from Pittsburgh, they were specifically really selecting for healthy age tissues. So we can see, um, but I mean, even a healthy person may have some inflammation, right? But, uh, yeah, right. But, mm -hmm. yeah, we, well, yeah, we can look at the lists. And, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm, right, mm -hmm, yeah. right. Okay. And so do you know how they... Have died? I mean, is that impacting the tissue? Like, if, if they died COVID or something, I mean, it would still be a healthy person aging. Right. It's a ninety-year-old. I don't think they have COVID patients in this, but okay. that we from because that's not our specific own tissue. We we yeah. have to ask them more, yes. right? But um, um, I mean, for other tissues that we have, the muscle or from live people, you can take yeah, yeah. live muscle yeah. biopsies the ovaries are also from living people sure. you who came in for other i mean so sometimes um, somebody has a uterus problem yeah. and then they just take the ovary out also even though that appears still pathologically healthy right so i don't know exactly what how they did it uh, collect yeah, for, the for the lung either. right but we can ask we her. can ask yeah you're right. We have to be a bit careful there, right? Yeah. I just, I think it would just be really confusing to if there was some underlying feature happening that right. you weren't aware of. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. That's, that's all it was. Really right. About. That's what I was thinking about the experiment you mentioned, where you look at different healthy individual at different ages. Mm -hmm. 
because you know you can like you must be able to do this experiment with kind of large number of patients and see correlations, right? Because mm-hmm. everyone can have, say, like, you know, COVID that is right. undiagnosed and right. asymptomatic. But um, that's why I was but, saying the lung is so strange where the signatures were so huge, even though the number was relatively small still. I mean, so apparently what I talked with somebody else about that the other day, where when your signature is just so strong, it overcomes biological variability of the person to person. But when you have more subtle biological changes, the person to person variation dominates, right? right? So in the lung, we've seen that, yeah, I think it just happens because there's such a big remodeling and fibrosis, it's so strong what happens. Um, but but you know, um, yeah, we that, yeah we can. But then in like the muscle, we have eighty eight people, right? And then so that's uh, maybe a good number across the age. And then we also get longitudinal uh, biopsies again three years later, so that can also be strong. So um, Is muscle cell the good model, muscle tissue good model for aging. We were just talking yesterday about how <laughs> muscle mass goes down with aging, and then there's not a lot of other. The problem is muscle like mass, muscles, yeah. right? right. So there's other diseases that could affect right. muscle. Right, but sarcopenia is very bad, right? Uh, that happens. Well, I mean, it's surprisingly, the muscle mass goes down super fast in somebody who's like 75 or 70. So there, three years later, we expect huge decline in muscle mass, mm-hmm. right? And um, yeah, muscle is probably typically relatively healthy, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> right, right. Right. Yeah. Muscle has its own challenges, you know, right? There's long, hugely long cells, <laughs> you know. So. Uh, but, you know, yeah, we like the muscle. We, and I mentioned to you, we have um, these, we can buy, build muscle um, myofibers that are from from human people also, right? Where, where you then can culture them and they can contract and they react to stimuli, right? So you can get a functional redoubt potentially from, so yeah. So yeah, we're building these signatures, <laughs> right? Yeah. Within your biomarker sets, mm-hmm. is it possible, just the, trying to ask this question in my head for the past five minutes, so yeah. forgive this. Oh, but yeah, please. Are there, so is there a way to distinguish in these sets between the biomarkers of healthy aging versus the biomarkers of like, and I, this is where I stuck, unhealthy aging, mm. but not a disease per mm. se. Right. right. Yeah. We discussed that. Yeah. Did you have, okay. Yeah, that, that's a question. And I can't quite up with the group. close yes. the loop. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, okay, I so. mentioned yesterday also, where is aging, where, who defines right. when it is healthy or unhealthy? Right. Who defines where healthy aging ends and the, pathology starts right i mean is this just an uh some medical doctors and pathologists at some point made up some rules right but can we with our molecular signatures make that more precise um yeah. but i i don't think we know exactly the answers yet right or Joanna? no i think uh, <laughs> i think uh, it's right. yeah right. i guess i was thinking like if you had a sample from a person from every point in their life Mm-hmm. just theoretically mm-hmm. maybe there are some people who are about to start having all like later in life all these different age-related diseases mm-hmm. and others who don't and at some point like the signature you see for like diabetes is going to be a diabetes signature mm-hmm. more than right. it is the aging contribution mm-hmm. to diabetes mm-hmm. as a right. precondition mm-hmm. but there probably is a point where that I mean, there hypothetically is a point where you see the aging signatures before you see mm, right. the, like the disease etiology right kick in. right yeah. Also, I think is there it something was like that? showed that sometimes, like with this like very long longitudinal study, there are already some clue, like right. early on, some clue of like a disease-specific biomarkers that tend to like light up. Yeah. But not being pathological or whatever, mm-hmm. right. but True. already elevated, and like some years later, the mm. person will develop the like a pathology. So mm-hmm. this could be like early really mm-hmm. super early detection markers mm-hmm. right which at mm-hmm. one point go from like healthy aging to yeah so mm-hmm. that's what's the reason why we concluded that we really need better model systems well, I was just so thinking, that you could kind of accelerate 
that part yeah yeah, right, yeah. Right. i was thinking that might be a good use case for a different use case for a sentinel cell like oh, even yeah. almost like a diagnostic right, right. exactly yeah. For a yeah. like cell. your agent right <laughs> right <laughs> right <laughs> like <laughs> it's just like yeah that that wouldn't be that helpful like thanks <laughs> <laughs> no i agree something, something actionable i guess that right. would be pre-symptomatic right. yeah I agree. Schedule twice yeah. as many hours to write your other one. Oh, <laughs> <'Cause> uh, <laughs> no, actually, yeah, no, I think that was nice. Nice. <laughs> it'll go off. <laughs> no, that would be great. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, this was cool. Yeah, I think we're almost out of the window. Here. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, do we want to share one of us share some of these thoughts with mm -hmm. the rest of the group? Yes, we would like to I take notes, but uh, maybe it can be a group effort. Yeah, Unless I think someone... we'll just do this again. But okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. I took some notes, but not right. for its purpose. Just like interesting yeah. things you guys said. I know yeah. things that I didn't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Right. 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 Um, but it would be, yeah, but I would love to follow up maybe after this meeting, after we look a little bit through some of these lists and then maybe circulate around, maybe in this small group or something. Yeah. And then yeah, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to kind of start thinking about, right, what could be done. And um, yeah, that would be great. That'd be wonderful. Yeah, cool. All right. Mm -hmm. We have a, I guess, just a break now. Oh, yeah. Then, nice. uh, we regroup in about half an hour. Oh, good. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Thanks, everybody. That's cool. Thank you. Very good. All right. Why is Reagan Airport called this year? Mm -hmm. International. Oh, okay. Okay. you're right though. It's very confusing. Well, <laughs> well, I think the I think I did look that up one time because I think it had a name. Oh, well, they good. named it Reagan. Well, nice. It existed yeah. for like 1987 yeah. or whatever. But the whole and they may look something. I have the same I'm assuming the CA is I'm assuming maybe something like that. Well, I got confused because I was like, why is the air O R D? <laughs> right oh there is ord yeah i was like and i googled that and there's like an answer to that and then i looked like why are all the airports what they are and yeah i guess one of those that's at all also where's the all coming from right? yeah <laughs> lax what is the x coming from i was wondering i was just, just in la right, <laughs> right. Sounds well, cool. in both cases it stands for international right x la lax is in la international airport i suppose san francisco international airport just like oh, a different red yeah. It just sounds good. It's not an eye. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. SFO sounds good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>